We're joined now by one of the seminarians studying now at the NAC. Deacon Zane Langenbrunner is from the Diocese of Fort Wayne, South Bend, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our show. Thank you very much, Monsa. It's great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about what life at the NAC is like for seminarians. I think, uh, yeah, life at the NAC is similar to other seminaries in the sense that we start our day with mass, morning prayer, um, make a daily holy hour, go to class, you know, eat meals together, hang out, exercise, all that kind of stuff. Um, the main difference is the fact that we're here in Rome mm. um, and we walk to and from class out in the city. So every day I get to walk about, you know, 25 minutes to and from class, passing by these beautiful churches, the tombs of the saints, mm. um, and just getting to kind of see the universal church in a lot of different places and, and really, really get a sense that uh, Catholicism is a, is a worldwide religion and it's all right here in Rome. So an amazing opportunity really to be here. It is, absolutely. But service is also part of what you're doing, right? Certainly, And yeah. so what's it like to serve here? Here in Rome, um, a little bit different, you know. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, atypical apostolates, I would say, some, some things that you can't really do at normal seminaries. Um, for instance, a lot of guys serve with the Missionaries of Charity. We have a couple of different mm. Missionaries of Charity uh, houses here in the city of Rome, and some guys will go and help them serve the poor, the poorest of the poor here in the city. Um, myself, I'm at an apostolate. It's an American parish, but here in Rome, and so it's kind of a mix of Italian and American culture at the same time. A little bit of home and a little bit of here as well at the same time, but um, it's, it's been really a wonderful uh, yeah, just a wonderful experience getting to, to serve different people in different situations. It's always interesting hearing guys story about what their what's going on at their apostolate and there's a lot of different ones. So um, it's always it's really encouraging to hear what the Holy Spirit is doing in people's lives in a, in a variety of different circumstances. So what's your story? How did you come to really discern that you wanted to dedicate uh -huh. your life to Christ? To being a priest? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, admit, I hadn't really thought about it too much when I was a kid. Um, the, the more I think about it, the earlier I can see the seeds of my vocation. Um, I remember particularly one moment when I was at Mass with my mother, and I was probably five years old or something like that. And, um, and she, I must have been like rowdy or something like that. She was trying to like get me to calm down a little bit. We were kneeling. It was at the Eucharistic prayer. And she just said to me, Zane, look, up there on the altar, every single time we come to Mass, there's a miracle that happens on the altar with the Eucharist. And I think those are the, the seeds of my vocation because I really heard the Lord calling me to be a priest or at least explore the priesthood in Eucharistic adoration. And I was blessed to grow up from the Sisters of St. Francis of Perpetual Adoration in Mishawaka, my hometown. Mm. Um, and their charism is that they always have two sisters adoring the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament all hours of the day. And so the summer after I graduated from college, I went up to their chapel once a day and did a holy hour. I'd bring the Bible and just start reading. And um, I didn't really have any future plans at that point. So kind of my, some of my plans had uh, fallen through a little bit. And so I had a future open to God, um, offered it to him during that time of adoration. And that's when he really laid on my heart this vocation to the priesthood. And that kind of launched me on my journey. And that was, gosh, that was like six years ago, seven uh -huh. years ago now at this point. So. I'm really thankful that, that he gave me that gift through the Eucharist, that really, you know, that, that, that gift of a vocation in that moment. Well, it's the, the hub of the, the work of the Eternal Word Television Network is the Eucharist. You must mm -hmm. be pretty excited that you get to go back home just in time that's right, for the Eucharistic yeah. revival yeah, in the United right. States, huh? In fact, just about a week after I get ordained, I'm going get, to get ordained a priest on June 3rd of this summer, so please pray for me. Absolutely. And all of you out there, pray for me, too. Um, <laughs> But the week, about a week after I get ordained, we're doing a Eucharistic procession from Fort Wayne, where our cathedral is, to South Bend, where our co-cathedral is. Um, and different priests have been asked to volunteer to kind of carry the monstrance during that procession. And so I'll be, you know, about a week after I get ordained, I'll be carrying the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament from uh, one of the cities in our diocese to South Bend. And I, I couldn't be more excited about that. Now, your mother gave you this gift of formation and instruction and understanding what really happens in the mass you get to do something very similar you're working with children right yeah that's right that's how right. does that look what does that look like to be with them in those struggles? yeah so I t I, i'm teaching a group of 25 students i'm getting them ready for first holy communion um, it's coming up in about three weeks so mm. hopefully they're hopefully we're getting them ready um, <laughs> but it's 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 been a really wonderful experience this is my second year doing that apostolate and i just remember last year the day of their first communion you know kind of thinking about all the things we had talked about and and we were just like running them through like rapid fire questions kind of the week before it happened and it was just amazing to see they knew the answers. They knew like what the what the bread turns into, what the wine turns into. Um, they knew when Jesus gave us that gift of the Eucharist, who the apostles were, that kind of thing. Um, it was really amazing to kind of see them go from, uh, yeah, just, you know, not too much familiarity about the faith or about the gospel or about the sacraments, certainly, 
to really knowing what's going on when we go to mass. And I hope that the kids this year have a, have a similar experience as well. But it's been, it's been amazing to get to work with them and just to see the faith kind of come alive and that sense of wonder in their eyes when you explain something to them for the first time. Um, I hope that we're kind of planting seeds that will really uh, bear much fruit later in their lives. What are you looking forward to the most in, in that moment when you will have consecrated hands and really, really start on this journey? Are you nervous? I don't know if I'm nervous. Um, I'm more excited than anything. Um, you know, the, the thing that I've been re reflecting on the most, um, I think about that's actually that summer when I really first started thinking about the priesthood. I was, I remember reading the letter to the Hebrews mm -hmm. and the letter to the Hebrews is all about the priesthood. Um, and the more time in seminary has gone by, the more I've realized that the priesthood is not about me. It's really about Jesus and that my priesthood, if I could even call it that, is really only a share in Christ's priesthood. It's only the making present of the eternal priesthood of Christ. And I, my life is totally at the service of that. Um, and I just can't wait to, to kind of recede into the background and hopefully allow Christ to really shine through my life and to shine through everything I do as a priest. That's my goal and that's what I, you know, that's, what, that's, that's the grace I'm going to be asking for as I'm laying on the floor there getting ready to be ordained by, by Bishop Rhodes uh, there in Fort Wayne. So, um, yeah, just, just the, the I'm not, I don't know if I'm yeah, nervous, but really just excited more than anything to, to receive this gift and to, to hopefully serve the Lord as well as I can. We're praying for you and we're excited for you. Last quick question. Sure. How's your Italian? <laughs> Molto bene. No? <laughs> Molto bene. bene no, in the, in the classes, I go to the Gregorian University, all the classes are in Italian. So my hearing is very good. My understanding, my speaking is still lagging behind a little bit. So maybe some of the staff here in, in, in EWTN here in, in Rome could help me out a little bit. Absolutely. You can come over and practice with this great team. There you go. Well, we're grateful for you and we'll be praying for you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. God bless.